On this video of Oxman Garage, I'm going to show you how to time a Gen 2 F-150 Coyote motor. Hey guys, welcome to Oxman Garage and today we're going to be timing this Gen 2 F-150 Coyote motor. This is out of a 2017 F-150. Uh, I basically tore this down to a bare long block just to check out the timing components, the camshafts, the journals, just to make sure that this is uh, going to be a good running motor. So what is the difference between the F-150 Gen 2 Coyote and the Mustang Gen 2 Coyote? The big difference is the firing order. They have different camshafts and the timing procedure in F-150 is different with the uh, the camshaft neutral position when you're timing this so we're gonna go step by step on how to time this motor so uh let's uh get started all right so your first step is you want to put your lifters and uh rockers in you want to soak these in oil for like a good 24 hours before you put them in the car if they're brand new if they're used i would still soak them with uh, 5W20 Motorcraft engine oil. You want to put your lifters in and then your rockers. That little indentation uh, dimple right there, it's just going to press right on there. And then we want to make sure too that your rockers are not off to the side like that. You want to make sure that these are nice and center on the valve because if anything is off center, you might have engine damage. Next thing you want to do is you want to take some engine oil and you want to be very liberal and put engine oil in all the cam journals. And then when you put your caps down, you want to put engine oil on that and on the camshaft, on the camshaft as well. All right, so you want to put your camshafts in. This is on the left side of the head. This is the, the head that you want to start at first. So you got your exhaust cam and then your intake cam is up top. And so you don't mix these up. The orientation on the face is different. And also if you have two D slots on the face here, and this one only has one D slot right there. And if you have the part number as well, if you look at the part number, the last number is before GA is 273, that's your exhaust cam. And this one is 271 for your intake cam, the last set of numbers. Remember, before you put these in, you want to get a lot of engine oil on here on all the journals. Okay. Now, when we're looking at this, we're looking at this as the level plane. And this is the way I have my camera set. Okay. So we'll start with the exhaust cam first. Notice how this D slot right here is in like a seven o'clock position. And you have this kind of like backwards L and this is like pointing right at uh, 12 o'clock. So you wanna make sure that's seated in there and that's the neutral position where you'll be able to tighten down all the caps. Now this is the intake cam. And notice how this D slot right here is kind of like in a seven o'clock position. And then this D slot is in the 12 o'clock position. So this is the neutral position that you want your camshafts in before you put your cam caps on. Okay, so at this time you want to put on your single cam caps. And we're not going to tighten them at this time. We're just going to set them in place. Just put them on. Okay, then you want to put your mega cap on last. And remember, don't tighten yet. Remember, before you tighten down your cam caps, these are all numbered and labeled. So these bottom ones on the exhaust cam are one, two, three, four, five. And on the top intake, it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on them, you'll see there's little arrows 
facing towards the front of the motor. And if you look on the bottom, there's the a big diameter here and a small diameter. So you can't even mess up the orientation because they're going to go right on there. So now I'm just going to snug these down finger tight on my impact. It's all the way on the, the lightest setting. But now I'm just going to snug all the bolts down. So don't crank on them tight. You just snug them down. All right, so now you want to tighten down your bolts. And this is an 8 millimeter. And you want to tighten it down with an inch-pound torque wrench to 53 inch-pounds. And then I'll have a visual of the torque sequence of the cam caps that you're going to be tightening down. And then after you do 53 inch-pounds, you want to use a, a, an angle dial um, to get 45 degrees. So here's uh, 0 degrees and 90 degrees. You want to go right in the middle. Or you can just eyeball it and then just go 45 degrees. And once you do that, they're torqued down. So before we begin, we want to make sure the crankshaft is in the 5 o'clock position. So it's just right there, 5 o'clock position. And if you have this crank tool... It's kind of vertical up and down. All right, so next you want to install your filters. You want to make sure that the open end is towards the front of the engine. Just push them all the way back. All right, so next you want to install your VTC gears on the camshafts. Note the timing orientation. You have the two dark colored links here with this timing mark, which is on the intake gear. And then this one with the ridge on the back, this is the exhaust gear. Note the timing mark on the bottom there with the one single colored link. All right, so we're gonna take our timing gear and we're gonna flip it, okay? So remember that this big gear right here that's your exhaust side, and the one that doesn't have one out here, that's your intake. So now we're going to rotate it because we want to get that left, the left timing mark in, I would say, about the 2 o'clock position. And you can see on the inside these little nipples here, those are going to go right in your D slots. So now you want to put that on there. And then when you're doing this, you want to take your uh, the secondary timing chain tensioner and you want to rotate that 90 degrees so that the chain can slip right on there. All right, so you just want to push it all the way on there until it, it seats on the, the face of the cam. And then next thing you want to do is you want to take the secondary tensioner and you just want to flip it back, okay? And then you just want to take a bolt and just make sure it goes right into into the uh, the camshaft face bolt hole. Just test them out and thread them. Make sure they're aligned. All right. So now you want to install the VCT bolts Okay, you want to put them in there and these are going to tighten to 133 inch pounds and Then you want to do 90 degrees after that Okay, so when you're tightening these bolts down you want to use a 10 millimeter uh, 12 star pattern socket and then when you're tightening these down you want to get a a wrench or something and just hold the flats of the cam so you don't move the cam while you're torquing them. All right, so now you want to install the the crankshaft gear and you want to make sure that the beveled edge is facing forward.
Okay, so now we're going to put the primary chains on. You're going to see one dark colored link on one side, and then there's going to be another dark colored link on the other. You want to put the one up here on the L timing mark, and then the other one's going to go right on the timing mark, right on the crankshaft on the back. And at this time, you can move the crank to like the 330 position, 3 o'clock position. Just move it back around so you can get the slack out of the chain and get it on there. All right, so now you want to put your timing chain guides on. You have the bottom one here. It kind of goes on this pin and that pin, and then your top one swivels on that pin right there. There's one bolt, and that's an 8 millimeter, and that's 89 inch pounds. All right, so your next step is to take your chain tensioner, and you want to compress the piston down, and you want to put a pin in there to keep it compressed. You want to do this in a vise. So you're going to close the vise down on the piston, compress it flat, and then you're going to put the, a pin in there, use a paper clip or any kind of welding rod, and keep that compressed. All right, so now you're installing your chain tensioner here. There's two bolts on either side that's eight millimeter and you're torquing those down to 89 inch pounds. So once you got it in there, you're gonna pull the pin and that's gonna hold tension on the chain. All right, so now we wanna rotate the crankshaft clockwise. The keyway here needs to be at the 730 position. All right, so now you're going to be doing the right side and you're going to do the same thing you did for the left. You're going to put your lifters and rockers on. You're going to lube all your cam journals and then you're going to put your camshafts on. The intake camshaft, you'll see this is kind of like in a four o'clock position, this little D slot right here. And this little slot right here is like in a seven o'clock position. And then you'll see this L shape kind of going up and down and it's at the 12 o'clock. And remember this is our level plane right here. And then over here, this is kind of like at a, a three o'clock position. And when you move the, the cams, you'll, you'll feel that they're in a neutral position that they're not, the lobes are not touching the rockers. So you want to set them in there. And then uh, your next step is going to put your your journal caps on there. All right, so next you wanna to torque down your cam caps. It's the same procedure from the left head. 53 inch pounds and then 45 degrees. I'll show a diagram there. And then you wanna put your intake and uh, exhaust uh, cam filters on there. All right, so now you have your uh, your primary cam gears. You'll see on this side you have your exhaust gear, and that dark colored link is going to go on that timing gear. And this is your intake. The two dark colored links are going to go there. So now you're going to flip it so that your exhaust gear is on this side, and then you'll see. I'm getting to focus. You'll see right up in the 11 o'clock position is going to be the right timing mark right there. So now you want to put it on. And remember that this guy needs to be 90 degrees and you're going to have to compress them down to get the chain over. Alright, so once you got it on there, you kind of want to play with it a little bit. You want to get the chain over this tensioner here and on the bottom one. I'm not going to show the video of me struggling with it. So then you want to take your tensioner and you want to flip it the 90 degrees so that it's now on the chain. 
All right, so now you wanna tighten your VCT bolts, all six of them. I didn't show this on the left side, but you wanna grab a crescent wrench or some kind of wrench to hold the flats of the cam to prevent the cams from moving. And you wanna tighten these at 133 inch pounds, and then you wanna do 90 degrees. All right, so now you wanna put your right side timing chain on. You'll notice that there's two dark colored links, just like the one over here. The one dark colored goes here on the right timing mark. And the other one right here on the timing mark on the, the crankshaft here. If you have to move the crankshaft a little bit to get the slack out so you can wrap the chain on, you can go ahead and do that. But make sure you return this notch at the 730. Alright, so now you want to put your right side timing chain guides on. This bolt right here is the same as the other side, 8 millimeter, 89 inch pounds. When putting this guy on the, the swivel guide on, on the bottom, you want to move your crank just a little bit to get that slack out so that you can put it on there. And same as before, you want to put your chain tensioner in a vise, put that pin in to compress the cylinder, and you want to put it on the other side. So for some of you that don't have a vise, you can use one of these uh, uh, woodworking clamps. You basically just put it in there and you uh, tighten it down, and then you want to put your pin in. So just, you know, thinking outside the box if you don't have a vise and you want to use something like that just to compress that piston. Alright, so you want to get your chain, chain tensioner in there. These are both the same on our side, 8mm and 89 inch pounds. And you want to pull your pin and you got tension on the chain. And there you go, that's how you time a Gen 2 F-150 Coyote motor. This is for the 15 to 17 F-150s. Uh, your next step, you're going to be putting your uh, timing cover on, your valve covers, and basically build up the a complete long block, put on your accessories. So, you guys have any questions, comments, uh, comment below. Let me know what you think about uh, this video. Anything I can do to improve, uh, please like and subscribe. This is Josh with Oxman Garage.